Well, first off, Mark, thank you for joining me. Did I hear correctly? You're in Wales right now. Yeah, I'm over in Wales. Yeah, so I just come over. Um, so as funny as it sounds, so I live in England, mm -hmm. but I live right on the bridge. And then you literally, so I'm, England's like 15 minutes that way. I go across the bridge and then I'm in a different country in Wales. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> so that makes uh, sense. Yeah, so so Bridgewater is really the bridge between the water. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Bridgewater. Yes, yes. Uh, it's not too far from Wales. Literally, if you go across, if you go across the sea, I could probably get to Cardiff in about 10, 15 minutes. But if I go round, it takes about an hour to drive round by car. So, gotcha. Yeah. Well, for thank you for joining me, uh, and I appreciate the time. Um, you got to tell me a little bit about it because I've I've read about it, but the story and how you got into combat sports is pretty interesting. How did you get into combat sports and what you're doing now? Oh, you want to go back that far? Do you? Go back that far, <laughs> back to 25 years old. I'm an old school veteran, a proper old school now. God, yeah. Like, what am I? I'm, I'm coming up 40, so I'm like, I'm like, when I go into a gym now, I go into Thailand training, or I go to like any gym now, I'm like the old guy. People look at, look at me like, oh, you're that veteran. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So basically, how I first started was I, I never walked into a gym. So I was 25 years old. Never stepped foot in any combat gym. So I was 25 years old. And uh, it all started, um, basically, I was drinking all the time. I, you know, I, I still like a beer now, I'm not going to lie. But I was drinking all the time. And then um, I was sat in the pub and it was on my 25th birthday. And on my 25th birthday, I was, I was watching TV and, and it was uh, UFC was up on the TV in, in the pub. And I said to my mate, it was my a friend, good friend of mine, Sean Owsley. I said, I, I pointed up at it and I was like, I'm going to do that. And they're <laughs> like, the whole, because everyone knows what I was like, because I was, oh, you know, I like the beer so much. Like pretty much everyone around the table just started laughing. And uh, my friend said to me, you won't do that. And I said, why not? He said, because you ain't got the dedication. You won't do that. And I said, watch me then. I said, watch me. And that was it. Just, just. <laughs> One person telling me I couldn't do something. And then I believe about five months later, I was having my first fight. So I literally, from that day onwards, I pretty much put myself in the gym every day, trained my ass off, and then I got my first amateur MMA fight at Bridgewater Town Football Club. So It's, uh, it's a fantastic how, story, yeah. and, and I read it, yeah. and, and I, I wanted some more insight on it. So you're 25 years old, you're drinking at the bar, you see it on TV. What was it about it that you saw on the screen that appealed to you so much that made you say, that, that's me? <laughs> okay. So I remember the, um, going back to my very first pro fight. Um, I had my first pro fight and I won the fight. I literally, I fought a guy called Sam Hooker. He picked me up and he threw me all over the ring. At the time, I didn't even really know how to wrestle. Um, I, did, I, did, all I, did, I, I was just known for having heavy hands, you know? And uh, he picked me up, threw me all around the ring. And then, uh, and then I just, I can remember the second round, I just thought, I've got to hit this guy. This guy's <laughs> just ragdolling me. I've got to hit him. And I can remember I just hit him with his massive right hand. Bang. Knocked him out. And then uh, after the fight, I got interviewed. This is going back to the question you just asked me. I got interviewed. And they was like, so why, why do you do this, Mark? Why do you do And I can remember the simple answer. I was like, because I just love the violence. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I mean, I you're... Little, looking back on it, in a good way, I suppose I do. Anyone anyone that says, you know, you've got to enjoy, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. And it, and it is a violent sport. So if you don't love the violence, then there's... But it's, it's good to do it in a controlled manner, you know? Well, I was going to say, I mean, you're, you're not the average person. I mean, you're a big dude. I mean, 6'4", 240s. Um, before turning 25, did you, you know, get into a lot of scraps before that? Yeah, that, that was another thing as well. Um, you know, when, when, I, where I grew up, um, I grew up on a, it was a, you, you lot call it in America, I believe you call it the ghettos, don't you? In, mm -hmm. in the UK, you know, we call it council estates, which is, you know, no disrespect. I grew up on a council estate my whole life. So, you know, I can say this, but you know, council estate is sort of, a I wouldn't say the lower class was the wrong, but you know, it, it, it's it's the rough, the roughest part of the estates. And the estate I sort of grew up on, you you had to 
you know, if you didn't fight, if you, if you couldn't look after yourself, you were at the bottom of the pecking order, you know. It was like, go and get this, do this, do that, do that. So all through growing up, like, you know, we, we I was always fighting or had to fight. And like, looking back on it, I didn't have a bad childhood at all, but it was just the way it was. You know, it was either like, you know, if, if you couldn't stick up for yourself, you get picked on and you were at the bottom of the, of the list. So, yeah, I grew up, I was always scrapping growing up, you know. I was always scrapping. And it got to the point where I kind of got fed up of scrapping on the streets. And so I just, that's that's when I said, especially when I was, I was very, obviously I was, I watched UFC through and through um, from the early age, just my little, little and there. From sort of early age, I sort of, uh, was always watching UFC and then just growing up through, um, you know, growing up, I was always in and out of fights and stuff. So I just wanted to turn, I wanted to show everyone basically that I could turn negative situations into a positive one. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just off of that bet, my friend said to me, my friend said to me that I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do that. I haven't got the discipline. Just off of that, I wanted to prove to everyone, look, 25 years old, it's never too late to walk into a gym and turn your life around. You know, 25, eight years after, eight years after when I hit, you know, I hit 33, I went from 25 years old, within eight years, I was fighting in the UFC, the very fucking same thing I pointed up out of the TV and said I was going to do, and my mate said I couldn't do it. So don't tell me I can't do something, because I will. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, that, that right there is amazing that you were able to do that. Yeah. It's not many people that can make that happen when, when you would get into kind of like the street fights and, you know, uh, getting into fights on the streets and things of that nature. Did, did that like tell you at that moment? All right. I know I got a pretty good punch. Like did you could tell, like you had the power already at that point. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, so my nickname is the hand mm-hmm. that my nickname is literally the hand. And, uh, and, and it just coincides with my second name, you know, the hand of God, the mm-hmm. hand of God beer, you know, it coincides. <laughs> and, and my first, going back to my first fight again, um, I can remember, like, the guy I fought, he was literally massive, Sam Hooker. He had muscles on muscles. When he was sat down, I said to my coach, ah, he, you know, he's got a bit of a belly on him after. Like, I know he's big, but look, he's got a bit of a, he's a bit out of shape. When he took his top off, it wasn't his belly, it was his abs. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and then... Literally, when I everyone thought I was dead. When I walked out, he walked out, and then I walked out. And you could see on everyone's faces, they were like, "He's dead. This guy's dead." <laughs> and then, like after like two rounds of him just picking me up, throwing me around like a ragdoll, and then I hit him, bang! And, and that's what like it's gone back to what you said. I've always had that KO power. I've always been known for grabbing heavy hands. And then when I hit the guy, bang! It was my friend John the Greek. We call him. Uh, uh, he took me out and just started calling me the hand, like because because of, of that fight, yeah, the hand. And then everyone everyone I knew just started calling me the hand. And then that's when my nickname come about because of obviously my punching power. So um, that's where the hand of God beer was uh, invented. <laughs> I was going to say that answers another question I was going to have for you. So thank you for doing that. And, and I think the best nicknames are the ones that come up for a reason, not like created, but yeah. that you create yeah. the actual combat. So that's fantastic. Last question about like your, your start when you're sitting there having beers, watching it, were you out of shape at that point? Like what, what kind of physical condition were you in at that point? Um, Oh yeah. Like no, like now knowing what fight fit is and knowing what um, pub fight fit is, is two completely different things, you know? Um, <laughs> this one, come on, here, you've been good going on. Yeah. So being, um, say hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, you know, a minute of pub scrapping seems like 15, 20 minutes. It seems like hell, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, yeah, I was out of shape. <laughs> to cut a long story <laughs> short, I thought I was fit. You know, I think everyone does, don't they? Until they walked into an actual combat gym and actually had a proper fight, then, uh, you know, it is, <laughs> you're not fit. <laughs> You know, fight fit and pub fight fit is two different things. Yeah. So you you go through your career, as you said, eight years later, you're fighting in the UFC, you fought in Bellator, I mean, two of the biggest MMA promotions around. 2015 hits and you 
you briefly go into retirement due to injury. Um, what was the injury and, and what made you think that I'm done with it? Right. So it, it wasn't. So the, the, the original, do you want to, do you want to take her? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, right. no, it's on the Come down a bit, all right? Sorry, mate. Three year old running around. <laughs> uh, I've, yeah, mine are at daycare right, right now. I know what it's like. Time. So so in 2015, um, you briefly kind of go into retirement. There was injury. What was the injury? And, and did you think that it was all over? Yeah, so so the the, the, the injury started, um, it wasn't actually 2015. The injury started in uh, 2013, I believe. Yeah, and then, so basically, I, I just signed with Bellator. And then at the time, can you remember they used to do the four-man have you had the four man tournaments and it was like a hundred grand for winning that tournament and mm -hmm. I was signed up for that tournament and I thought God, I've got a good chance of winning this tournament um and and at the time you had I think it was Ron Sparks who was the the big dude that um Eric Prindle he was in it it was myself and this other guy now my first matchup was Ron Sparks and even though he was a big big guy I thought this is a good you know I got a good chance of winning this tournament so then um, that come about, and literally um, about three weeks before I was meant to do that tournament, I was wrestling, I got picked up, I got slammed on my neck. And then from that point, I could feel my arm, I lost all the feeling in my arm. My arm went completely dead. Um, and basically I was paralyzed down through one side. Um, ended up going to the hospital, blah, 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 blah. And what I've done is I cracked my C6, C7 vertebrae. Wow. And where I landed on my neck, funny, I saw, I squat my disc so severely that what happened is the, the disc squat to nothing and it um, the nerve coming out the side of my disc, which fed this arm, my right arm, um, basically shut off. So it, hence why I lost all the muscle in my tip, my arm. Wow. Um, and then obviously I, I, I got rushed into hospital. I had to have two operations. Uh, they they took a piece of bone out of my hip, done a fusion to take, they scraped all the disc out, done a fusion, fixed the crack bones, my C6, C7, screws, plates, everything. Um, I think they, they basically told me I'll never fight again. And then um, 18 months later, again, tell me I won't do something and I'll do it. And then 18 <laughs> months later, I was literally within three months I had to wear a neck brace for like six months. And then um, I was three months later, I was in the gym just trying to lift weights, build myself back up. Eventually, 18 months later, um, Bellator weren't going to let me fight because they said I had to get, you know, doctors to sign me off fit to fight. In the end, I literally I practically begged my doctor. I said, look, I'm fit. Let me fight. Let me fight. I'm fit. I'm fit. So I, I managed to convince my doctor to sign me fit to fight. He signed me fit to fight. And then five weeks later, um, I think Chet Congo at the time, he was like ranked seven in the world. He just signed with Bellator. I think they fed me to the Lions a bit here, to be <laughs> fair. But um, and they, they, they offered, I shouldn't have took the fight. Looking back on it, I shouldn't have took the fucking fight. But they was like, yeah, we, we got a fight for you. Four weeks time, you can fight Chet Congo. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, imagine that beating that guy. If I beat him, then I'm I'm like from here, right up to here. Just that, you know, just broke my neck. Literally, wow. honestly, a true story. This is just broke my neck, paralyzed down one side for God knows how many months. And then yeah, just jump in with one of the best guys in the world on a month's notice. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it, you know. That's that's just that's just who I am. I did it. Looking back on it, I shouldn't have done it, but do you know what I mean? I shouldn't have done a lot of things in my life, but you know, it's not it's not the things you uh it's not the things that you do you regret. It's the things you don't do when you're on your deathbed. You know what I mean? That's, so, that's why. Well, yeah, then, I mean, he's a monster. After that, after that, go, I know it's a long-winded story, but after that, I still had a lot of, um, I, I still had a lot of issues because I, I didn't sort of rehab my injury properly. I sort of rushed back into it. It was one of those injuries that take a couple of years, and I rushed it so much to get back into it. I was getting more and more like pains in my arms and stuff. And that's when I was sort of like in and out of retirement, shall I or shall I? And then um, in the end, obviously I, I, I rested up, I healed it all properly and I thought, nah, I'm not done yet. So, yeah. 
it's it's crazy to come back from that type of injury. I mean, I, do you still feel any of the residual from that, or do you feel like it's kind of you're past that? I think after 15 years at high level combat sport, I think I've got that many injuries. I don't know what sport. <laughs> 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 my, my, my other, like I remember, I went for uh, X rays on my hands, like I broke my hands. I, I went for X rays on my hands, for example. Anyway, yeah, I don't really feel much from that to answer your question. But here's another one. I went for injuries, uh, x-rays on my hand. And I said, I think I broke my hand. Like, you know, I was sparring one day. She goes, okay, we're x your hand. She come back, she goes, uh, Mr. God, uh, she goes, uh, you've got that many breaks and old injuries on your hands. We can't tell whether you broke them or not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my dad always said to me, wait until you're older. You're going to feel that arthritis. You wait, you wait, uh, you know, we do, we do, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we're there, there. Yeah. Well, I'm only a year younger than you, so we're we're right there with each other. But I don't have that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you you kind of you know you go through this, um, you bounce back. Um, 2019 comes around. What makes you decide to make that jump from MMA to bare knuckle? What kind of instigated that change? I, I like you as an interviewer. You've done your research. You? I've You've done, done my research. research. <laughs> so, um, so, so uh, I think, and, and, and a lot, you know, a lot of people say, you know what they say? Uh, there's a lot of like, speculation. Oh, yeah, the old, all the old washed up UFC guys, they all go to bed now because a last resort, last resort. No, for me, that's not the case at all. I generally feel my boxing and my stand up has always been my strongest point. And I think it got to the point where, like, uh, even in most of my MMA fights come the end, like, no one would stand and actually bang with me. No one would stand and bang with me. And I just thought, I got offered a, um, I got offered, straight off the bat, I got offered to fight one of the most experienced bare-knuckle boxers in the UK, a guy called Mickey Park, Parker, for BKB at the time, um, which is the big UK. Yeah, so I signed with BKB, and they wanted me to fight... Um, a uh for the British title straight off the bat because obviously I was known for standing up and banging and I thought bare knuckle boxing and then it, it just sort of it, it relit a fire again you know because towards the end of my MMA career if I'm honest I became flat like I just I, I've done it for so many years you know I've done it for like 10 years or so and I've just become flat I just felt like I needed, I needed to reinvent myself, and then bare knuckle boxing started coming in, and I thought, you know, this is the perfect sport for me. No, you've got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You've got to stand the bang with me. So then I ended up winning the British title for BKB. Um, the fight I, I had against Mickey Parker was we'd done exactly what we planned for, and that was basically stick him on the end of my jab and box him. Stick him on my jab and box. We knew he'd come forward. We knew he was a tough guy. Take me out for Mickey Parker. One tough, tough dude. If you look him up in the UK, bare knuckle boxing, you know, he, he he's tough as it come. Jumps him with anyone, he's tough. And um, so I thought, right, we, our game plan was just to get the rounds in, jab, move, box him. God, I won the fight, but I ended up with a head like a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, my head was like this. My head broke like a swell up. And then... Like obviously going into that, I was off the back of that. I was offered the Valor tournament, uh, four man, two fights in one night tournament, and I'll, I'll, I'll take my hat off to Mickey because if it weren't for that fight with him, um, I think I would have probably went into that tournament with a different mindset. Because after having that fight with Mickey, I realised you don't get paid for overtime in bare knuckle boxing. You can't just go tapping people and jabbing and moving and jabbing and moving because a little jab cuts you a little. Jab makes your eye go like this. You just got to get in and get out. You got to finish that fight and get in and out as quick as quick as, quick as you can. And then I quickly realised, um, obviously I had the two fights in one night. I fought Jack May, um, you know, highly regarded in his striking. He's I think he's fought for K and for Glory K1 champion. Then you know, I fought Mighty Mo as well. Beat him. Uh, also Mighty Mo, one of the best strikers of all time. And, and then I. I just sort of found my feet. I was like, this is my sport. This is what I'm born to do, you know? And then 
Then we had the pandemic, and then for two years, it's fucking been absolute hell. <laughs> I was I was gonna get to that. Um, before I do, um, I, I asked a uh, uh, fellow bare knuckle fighter, uh, Barry Jones, about his transition from boxing to bare knuckle, and then the transition from MMA now to bare knuckle. Um, obviously, in, in MMA, the gloves are are much thinner than in boxing, but just having nothing like how much more power did you feel that added to your punches like not having anything there do you know what i can remember i, I always say this and i and you know, i always pop to mickey because i think one i think he's a good guy two i think he, he doesn't get the credit he deserves from back home in england um but i can remember when i fought mickey and i sat there and the first jab i can remember he, he threw this jab but he sort of flicked his knuckles in my face boof and he hit me, and I was like, "That's a, that's this is different. This is different." And I can remember at that moment, I sort of I had to adjust my mind. Right, like this is gonna hurt. You either got to get your head around it now, or get out of it because this game ain't for you, you know. And 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 people say to me, "What's it like being hit with um with a bare knuckle?" And I, and, and I honestly, this how I describe it. You know, you know, if you squat your finger in a door, in a car door, in a door, you know that sharp pain where you just want to turn around and go, and yeah. then like beat everyone up around you. <laughs> it's that type of pain, sharp, horrible. And 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 if you're not prepared for it, like you can quit on the spot. And 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 we've seen it time and time again. How many pro boxers or pro MMA fighters and stuff have you seen in the bare knuckle? game they get hit once and they're like they stay down they're like mm -hmm. i don't want nothing to do with this i think it takes you could be as skillful as you like in Banaco, and i think it's proven as well you could be as skillful as you like but if you haven't got the mentality for it you got i think you've got to be slightly tapped because if you haven't got the mentality to um you know withstand these bare knuckle punches you're not going to go far in this game no when, when you're feeling it on your hands, I mean, um, the punishment that it takes on, on the hands, um, how do you kind of deal with it? Um, it? It's that much easier to break your hand. Um, how have you fared with it? She's like, she's like, she's got to be quiet. Got to be quiet right? Sorry, go, go, go again. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to say, as far as like the difference with your, with your hands, when you throw a punch and bare knuckle, obviously it's that much easier to break them. Have you had those issues? And if you had to kind of like modify yeah, how you throw a punch? Um, so my emo, a big set, big bone, big head. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I punched him. And if you can, if you look here, look, I got no uh, knuckles yeah. left at all. Yeah. Like they're completely flat and gone. So like this wow. hand, I got all my knuckles. This one, my knuckles are gone. I hit Mighty Mo, and I literally, I, I, I broke these two, two of my outside fingers. Um, and I think I didn't feel it until afterwards. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel it until afterwards, and then uh, I thought I dislocated it. So sort of after I had the fight, I was you can see in the interview, I'm trying to pull my finger to get oh. to dislocate it back into place, but I didn't dislocate the knuckle. I actually snapped it just before the knuckle. So I'm trying to pull it to get it back into place, and I'm actually <laughs> pulling the bone apart. Yeah, so uh self-doctoring isn't isn't the way forward. <laughs> That's wild. And then, um, but I think as well, if you go into a bare knuckle fight worried about breaking your hands then that's going to restrict your sort of punches. You're, you're going to be worried about throwing certain punches and stuff. So I think you've got to sort of go into a fight thinking, I'll oh, break my hands and break my hands. You, you can't think like that. you just got to go in there and finish it. You know, go in there, throw your hands, mm -hmm. throw down. So yeah. one of my probably final questions here, getting close to it, um, as far as, you know, the pandemic happening, I know there was travel restrictions, fights weren't happening. Uh, there's mandates. Uh, you, you actually got COVID at one point um, yeah. dealing with promoters. How hard was that whole stage where you've got all that different stuff I'm, going on? Honestly, mentally, mentally, I really struggled over the pandemic. I've had a lot of people don't know this. I almost feel like a lot of people give up on me. They're like, oh, yeah, he's going to pull out for the next fight. There's no point, like, because as soon as he's been matched for a fight, he's going to pull out, blah, blah, blah. But what people don't realise is what's actually gone on behind the scenes. Like, I've had, honestly, in the last two years since the pandemic started, I've had 10 fights fall through. And, like, mentally, that's... Yeah, and none of them has been because... 
I've gone on. Oh, it's because they've actually. It's a lot of it. I'm like, oh, sorry, mate. That's yeah, funny. so a lot of it is um mentally draining. You know, uh, we've had the whole country's been locked down. We've had all our gyms shut, so we've got nowhere to train. And then we've had border restrictions, so we can't get out of the country. Um, and then at one time I did finally get out. Um, I, I went to fight for BKFC. So I spent 14 days in Dubai. I'd done my quarantine in Dubai, which then allowed me to get to America. I'd done maybe six weeks training with Christine Pereira in Las Vegas. And then I sparred against a guy called Rasim Hackman Jr., his, his mm -hmm. son, you know, the, the boxer. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I was, sparring against, I was sparring against him. And then um, I got a phone call off him one night because he was meant to be fighting on the main card with a Mike Tyson and Roy Jones fight. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call off of him and he was like, Mark, I got something to tell you. And I said, Don't tell me you got fucking COVID, aren't you? He said, Yeah, how do you know? I said, because I can't, I can't stop shivering, mate. I'm, like, I was literally sweating, but I was freezing cold in my hotel room. And I ended up, the first time around when I had it, I ended up really bad with it. I ended up in hospital. And I was saying, but all the people around me, my manager and Tyler Goodjohn and that, they was like, Mark, you need to go to hospital. I said, I ain't going to hospital. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. Leave me. i got two weeks. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. In the end, uh, I think they managed to get me to hospital. Christine Ferreira, bless her come and pick me up. I was like, listen, you've got to get to hospital because I was that bad. Um, I went to hospital and then uh, they kept me in the hospital. I ended up with double ammonia on my lungs. Wow. So, and then, and then that was at that point, that's when I literally, I rung Dave Bellman up and I was like, listen, Dave, I said, I can fight with broken hands. I can fight with broken feet. I said, but I can't fight without my lungs. I said, I got double ammonia, mate. I'm out. So I was gutted, you know, that was, yeah, I was gutted. I hadn't had it easy the last two years. And, and, and I almost feel like a lot of the fans and stuff, they almost come to expect now that every time I get a fight, it's going to fall through or I'm going to pull out or something's going to happen, you know? But it's just the way it's been. I don't think a lot, especially the American guys, because you've been able to carry on with your fights and stuff like that. Us, us international fighters, we've had it hard, you know? We can't, mm -hmm. yeah, even to the point where half the time we haven't even been able to train because our gyms has been closed as well. It's good shit. Well, you've, you've got this fight coming up against Josh Burns. I mean, obviously, it seems like you when you fight a guy, you really do your homework on him. Um, he's been around the yeah. game for a long time. How excited are you finally to, to get back into it? Yeah, I'm, I'm all good now. I'm, I'm literally just like, I've done all my shots and stuff. I'm just waiting for my COVID passport to be updated now within the next week or two so that I'm all good to go. I can travel freely. I've got my passports. I've got... So that's, that's all. But... All that aside, Josh Burns, it's a fight I've wanted for ages. Mm -hmm. Even in, you know, so I was calling out with BKFC and stuff. I wanted that fight. And then, uh, obviously, because of, you know, restrictions and stuff, I felt like everyone sort of moved on without me. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone, so I went from rank number one, please gazette rank number one in the world, to completely being forgotten about. But I was still there. Like, I was like, listen, restrictions ain't going to last forever. Who have you got? Josh Burns is making a lot of noise. Josh Burns is one of the top fighters. Give me Josh Burns. Give me Josh Burns. Give me Josh Burns. I was calling out everyone, but in a respectable manner, you know, because I, I like to try and keep keep uh, the respect um, there still. But I was calling out everyone, and then all of a sudden, this opportunity came up with uh, BYB, you know, and then and then they offered the Police Gazette belt. And then for me to win that belt, I think it's the most iconic belt in boxing history. And I was like, I'm down. Give me Josh Burns. Give me that belt. I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> well, Mark, you've been through a lot. <laughs> your, your story is awesome. I mean, uh, yeah. someone buy the movie rights to it because it's good stuff. Thank you so much for joining me. And, and best of luck yeah. come, uh, I believe it's March 12th, right? March 12th. Yeah. yeah I can't wait. I can't wait, and I can't wait that, honestly, um, I'm not just saying it, you know, trying to gain fans or whatever, but I love fighting in the U.S. as well. I've been doing, fighting in the U.S. for the last 10 years, and I just can't wait to get back there and entertain all you U.S. guys, you know. Everywhere, there, there isn't a place I've been in, in the U.S.A. where I haven't been made to feel welcome, and I can't wait to get back. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I can only apologise about what's gone on these last couple of years with fights and stuff like that. But trust me, I'm still here and, and, and you are going to see the best of me yet. I, I promise you that.
Well, I can't wait to see the hand back in action. And uh, uh, Josh, better watch out for that hand because uh, I think it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you and best of luck.